All right, welcome back. This time, I'm just going to be talking about something that I mentioned before when we started editing our last image, which was the ability to open and edit raw images inside GIMP. You'll also be seeing why that is very, very important. Like I mentioned that time, GIMP does not allow you directly to open a raw file just like Photoshop or Lightroom do. So GIMP doesn't have that capability, but it's very versatile. You can actually add in a third party plugin, which will enable us to do it. And this is going to be very important, especially when it comes to extreme editing, just like the case that we saw before with the last underexposed image. So let's see what that plugin is and how it can be applied to GIMP. So you're going to go over to Google or you can directly type in this. This is the name, Dark table, very, very popular raw editing software. Okay, so you're gonna just type in this and if you just open this up, you can directly go over to the website also, which is darktable.org. You're gonna go to this part which says install. Okay, and then depending on your operating system, you're gonna click on the respective link. For example, I have Windows, so I clicked on this and an installation will start, which is very small, just like around half, uh, a GB or something like just 500 MB or something It's just going to take a few seconds. Let me show you how it looks if I go over to my downloads folder. And this is just like one of those things where you just download, click on it, it's going to install it on your computer, you'll be able to select the drive. And that's it, you really don't have to do anything apart from this. And then once this is done, you've installed Darktable on your computer, you're again going to go back to GIMP. And this time what we're going to do is if I just show you that folder where we have been working on this image. Remember this was what we did, this was a JPEG file and we got it to this, so not bad. But this time, can you see I also have, because when I did the shoot, I always shoot in RAW also. You never know when you require them. So this is on the Nikon camera that I use. It's the NEF extension that you get, just like for RAW, for Canon is CR2, and I think for Sony it's ARW if I'm not wrong, but these are all RAW images. And directly, GIMP wouldn't have opened this, but this time, since we've already installed Darktable, just see the thing here. So if I go to open, remember this is the .nef file. It's gonna hit open. And what's gonna happen is, it's first of all actually going to open this inside Darktable because Darktable itself is a software. You can actually open up the images just on Darktable, it doesn't really always have a relationship with GIMP, okay? So you can use Darktable alone also, but I don't recommend that. And the reason for that is right in front of you. It is not going to win any sort of user interface awards anytime soon, okay? It's just terrible looking. And for a beginner, you can really get confused as to where do you even start your editing at. Okay, like, yeah, I know I have got exposure here. That's because this was open already. But if you don't have, you got to figure these things out and do all these things. Okay, and it's just not, you know, something very user friendly. And since this is a GIMP course, we will stick to GIMP because we already know how to edit it. So the question now is, how do you edit this? How do you open this in GIMP? Well, once this window has opened up, all you have to do is just close it. Okay. So just close it. So we open this through GIMP, it opened up in Darktable, then we close that little window and then it opens it back in GIMP. Okay, that's how it works. And uh, sometimes when you're doing it for the first time, it might ask you that this raw file uh, has some embedded color profile. Do you wanna convert it to the built-in color profile, which is the sRGB profile in GIMP? Not 100% necessary, this is kind of more important uh, when you're talking about color profiles are more important when you're really dealing with prints, okay? Because a lot of the labs and the printers that you use have a, uh, then you have to be really careful about the color profile so that the colors don't look different as to what they did on your monitor, okay? But right now, if you wanna convert, you can. If you wanna keep, you can. I usually hit on convert because the RGB color profile is very, very popular. So I'd like to use that and I can just convert it. So either way, it's not really gonna harm. Now the thing is, now if I click on convert, it's gonna open it up. But if I did not have dark table, you just would have got an error message by GIMP, which would have actually told you that. It's not just any error message. They would have told you that uh, the error message says, GIMP cannot open raw files till the time you add some third party plugins. And it actually mentions dark table as one of the plugins. There are some other software available also. Dark table perhaps is the most popular. But the point now is we've got that same image again. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit 
shortcut, which is Control Command Shift J to fill this up. Now, what I want to show you here is, of course, I'm not going to show the entire editing process because I'm pretty much going going to be doing the same thing that I did with the last image. I'll directly be showing you the final product and we'll be comparing the quality between the raw edited version and the previous JPEG edited version. And you're going to find out obviously that the raw gives you better results. But just before I fast forward this process, I just want to show you the first step because of one particular reason, okay? So let's say if I was to go to colors, remember one of the things that we did was exposure, shadow highlight. So let's just pick anything. Let's say at some point I will be raising the shadows, right? Just like we did with the earlier edit. Now this time I want you to just pay attention on this, okay? What happens? Just see when I raise the shadows. Do you see, if you remember, you can even go back to the earlier videos when we were editing the JPEG image. Then this time, didn't it look much more smoother? like the whole rendering process when it actually increased the exposure, it seemed much more pleasing to the eye. Earlier on, it was kind of a bit laggy with that JPEG image. Why is that happening? Again, because a raw file has much more information about light data that GIMP can easily render. Think of it like this, much smoother to render because it has more data and also it's gonna give better quality because of that extra information. So it becomes like a really smooth experience with the raw image. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do everything like the color correction, all those things, and then let's see the final product here. All right, so I've just finished editing the second edit. Here it is, edit two. Let's compare it. First of all, let's open our original edit. So this was what we did with the JPEG edit and you can see it just kind of doesn't look good, right? But if you see this edit, this just looks much better and it was so easy to move those sliders around and it was just an overall very smooth experience. Let's get into a bit of the details, okay? Uh, first of all, you can see it's handled the colors much better because when I was trying to reduce the yellows here, uh, you, you could see, right, uh, if you remember, a bit of noise was coming in so I kind of uh, did not do that. But here, there was no noise. I was easily able to remove those yellows because of that extra information. Then look at the highlights, okay? Like it looks so nice here. Just look at the lamp and this part and see the highlights here. It's completely blown away, right? You can see we've basically lost detail here. This is white. Remember those, the last extreme right part that you were seeing on the histogram? This time it wasn't there. This just overall looks much more pleasing. Even if I was to kind of zoom in into things, I'm even sure that this will probably have uh, lesser noise, okay? Even though this was fine, actually I can't really notice too much noise till the time I really zoom in because we were very careful, but I'm sure that this, uh, the second one is gonna look definitely better, almost, uh, yeah, you can see like this, I think it's even more noise free. So the point is this, whenever you can, whenever you are faced with an extreme situation, always, always use the raw file to edit your shots. All right, I hope that you liked this entire series on this first image. We're gonna go on to our second image from the next video. I'll see you there.